All right, click in the button. Okay, hey everybody. Welcome to our panel on UX design. So this is our senior capstone projects from Iowa State University. Um, they've been, students have been working on this project all semester. It's self-directed. Um, if you've seen any of the other presentations, they're all linked together here in this, in this stream. Um, for this panel, we have Julia, Kaylee, Haley, and Jamie are going to be presenting on their projects that are all uh, UX UI focused, but they're also dealing with other larger issues as they're getting through uh, the ways in which design is addressing address, addressing some of those issues. So as the presentations go, if you have comments or questions or any feedback, please throw it in the chat. If you're watching this live, uh, I will filter it back into the QA session at the end. Um, and so with that, thank you everybody for being here and we will start with uh, Julia's presentation. So Kaylee, Haley and I, we will turn our uh, cameras off and Julia, if you would like to share your screen, you can take it away. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yep, it went full screen. We see like two phones and your logo. Okay, perfect. All right, so for my project, um, I created a mobile app named Petly. Um, Petly strives to connect pet owners um, with their communities and Okay. And incre increase pet safety, sorry. Okay, the concept behind the mobile app is to serve as the ultimate digital solution for pet safety. Um, it also acts as a virtual pet tag, storing important information for ease in emergency situations. Um, so I started off the project by researching and I found that there is a missing pet epidemic in the US and out of millions of dogs and cats in the US, one third go missing within their lifetime and 80% are never found. Um, so this statistic is actually a major inspiration for the outcome of my application, as well as um, my own personal experiences contributed as well. Um, some problems I've come across as a pet owner is um, lost pets with like a lack of identification um, trying to remember like medications, monthly preventatives um, for the pets. And also it's hard to find pet friendly places and activities to do. Um, and the most important to me is owners being unaware of nearby dangers. Um, for example, like a coyote sighting nearby, it would be um, saving the pet's life to know that. Um, and then I moved on to user research um, where I identified my target audience, um, which is primarily pet owners and social media users. But I also think vets and animal shelters could find it helpful because that's where most like the lost pets end up. So I did an online survey and gave it to various pet owners throughout social media um, and the results were that 50% aren't microchipped and then about 17% don't wear a pet identification tag on their collar. Um, and then also around 33% have found a lost pet. And when I talked to them about their experience, the majority said that they were able to return it to the owner through social media. Um, after research, I moved on to branding where I created this signature and logo. Um, for the signature, I really wanted to use a font that was bubbly and happy and friendly looking. And then I rounded the corners manually um, to make it softer. And then for the logo, I created this abstract dog in motion type of thing to play on the idea of the pet epidemic and lost dogs but I wanted to make it a little more lighthearted by adding the ball so the dog is chasing the ball. Um, for the color palette, I chose 
green and orange because green to me commonly means safety and like well-being and orange is just bright and optimistic. So I feel like those align with the brand really well. And then I moved on to structuring the application and how it would go. Um, so for this, I really wanted to make it very user-friendly, very simple, quick to use because most of some of the users, some hopefully, um, might, might be in a panic state when they're using it. So it should be really easy to navigate through. So that's what I did there. And then I moved on to my wire framing. Um, for these, I really wanted to focus on keeping cohesive elements throughout the whole um, app and using the same symbols for the same thing and making sure it's very user-friendly and just easy to use, yeah. Um, and then I moved on to my final screens. Um, this would be the opening page and the onboarding screen. So basically just letting the users know what the brand's mission is and the purpose of the app and why they should use it. Um, and then it goes to the login sign up screens. These are pretty basic, um, very standard, um, user friendly. I wanted to keep the color palette going in this as well. And then moving on, you go into the news feeds. For these, I think it was important to have two separate news feed pages that they can toggle back and forth from. One being the incidents page, just strictly incidents nearby. Um, and then there's the community page where you can um, post personal content and stuff like that. And then there's the messages where you can chat with everyone. And then moving on, you go to the maps. Um, here you can search by incident categories. And when you do that, you go to an incident and it shows you um, approximately where some have been reported recently. And then there's also a feature where you can go to activities and just have more information on those as well and save those. And then you go on and you go to the calendar. And the calendar is just um, to like set reminders for appointments, medications, events. And then you can click on the day and it brings up like a daily agenda that you have and how many events you have for the day. Just something to make it easier. Um, and then there's the profile. So for the profile, there's um, owner information, pet information, uh, the posts that the person has made. Um, and then there's also settings for privacy because I feel like with all this important information, it's very important to have good privacy settings. So I made sure to make sure it's set where the person can pick what information and when it can be shared. So like, in emergency situations, you can have your phone number pop up for people to see or something. And then also linking social media for the lost pet alert. And then moving on, you go to your pet's profile where you can have pictures and all the pet's information, but you can also add their allergies and medications and details on those, which I think can be very important for when your dog might get lost or even just go to the vet or something just to have like the history of all of it. It's good to keep track of. Um, and then there's the lost pet alerts. So this is where I really wanted to make it quick and easy. So the owner can just, if they're in a state of panic, they can literally just press confirm and it'll be sent out to their previous settings. So they get to confirm their information and all the preferences and then it gets sent out. And then they can also go back into it and press resolve or delete at any time. And then the next steps, I plan to create a little bit more mockups and screens for it, um, but I also really want to create a supplemental product for it because I was thinking like an ID tag with the QR code on it might be a good physical aspect to go with the app. Um, and then I really wanna continue with UX UI design and just content creation in general. And yeah, thank you for listening to my presentation.
Great job, Julia. Nice work presenting it as well. Okay, so moving on, uh, Kaylee, if you're ready, you can turn your camera on and start sharing your screen. Um, while Kaylee's getting set up, everybody watching live, please feel free to drop comments and questions into the chat. We'll introduce them into the conversation at the end. All the feedback and comments are really appreciated. So looks like Kaylee's ready. Awesome, and it's full screen. All right, Kaylee, take it away. All righty. Hello, everyone. My name is Kaylee Mills, and I'm the creator of Selfdom, a, um, an application intended to encourage college students to express themselves openly through a predestined quest. Now, the process of creating... Oh, geez. There we go. The process of creating this application became quite a quest in itself. I went through many twists and turns and hit a lot of bumps in the road, but my professor mentioned something at the very beginning of the semester that still resonates with me today as I'm sitting here and talking to all of you. And he said that we find value in wrong turns. I couldn't agree more, especially with all the twists and turns I've been through. So let's just get started at the very beginning. Originally, I based my capstone topic on mental health. I learned a ton of information regarding mental health conditions and start and selected a subtopic to focus on. For me, I chose perfectionism and as a perfectionist, I related heavily to this topic. Through my research, I learned perfectionism is a mental disorder linked to an array of mental health issues, specifically depression, anxiety, eating disorders, deliberate self-harm, and obsessive compulsive disorder. I also learned on average, young people are more perfectionistic than they used to be. And this is the quote that led me to determine college students as my target audience. After determining my target audience, I researched perfectionism in greater detail, discovering there are three types of perfectionism, namely self-oriented, other-oriented, and socially prescribed. Out of the three, socially prescribed perfectionism caught my attention the most. Socially prescribed perfectionism occurs when someone feels pressure from society to be perfect. And learning this led me to recognize perfectionism as a growing cultural phenomenon, um, ultimately fueled by social media. Today, social media connects us um, to cultural norms, instilling in younger generations the proper way to dress, behave, and identify. And this is where I started connecting um, perfectionism with self-expression. After conducting six interviews with college students, I connected or collected some pretty interesting data. 100% of the college students considered themselves um, perfectionists in one way or another, and they also um, felt negative feelings towards peer judgment. This makes sense considering society's high standards and the pressures of fitting in because no one really wants to be judged by their peers and this can cause some individuals to hide away their true selves. In fact, one out of the six college students said they openly express themselves on a day-to-day -day basis. And that one just happened to be my sister, Caitlin. Caitlin truly knows who she is, and this led me to explore possible self-expression solutions to help others feel as confident as my sister. I began connecting technology with my final deliverable and decided an application would be an interesting area to explore, especially with the negative ties to social media. As someone who had never created an application before, I brainstormed experiences I would want to engage in as a college student, and then it hit me. What if I created a predestined self-expression quest? I mean, college is all about finding ourselves, so why not create an application that promotes self-expression? I jumped on this idea immediately and came up with an all-encompassing name to further solidify my idea. Selfdom actually means the essence of oneself and individuality, and discovering this led me to researching software programs. 
After researching, I selected Figma as my software and started some preliminary wireframing exercises to get all of my ideas down. I determined self dumb would feature daily challenges, each fitting into one of three categories, namely social, style, and security. Each category would challenge the user in different ways. For example, social challenges would test the user's social skills, while style challenges would encourage the user to embrace their true style. Lastly, security challenges would push the user's comfort levels by putting them in new, somewhat uncomfortable situations. As a first year college student, I wish I had something to push me out of my comfort zone. I mean, I only started writing the SciRide halfway through my first year. I wouldn't even consider writing it, even if we were in a polar vortex. So after making these decisions, I moved into wireframing on Figma learning the software as I went and developing a cohesive system with a meaningful color scheme. I selected a grounded color scheme with greens and a hint of life with oranges. Overall, to truly express yourself, you need to be grounded and know who you are, but you also need to shine bright and show your true colors. With my color scheme determined, I then tackled my map feature to house each of the challenges in a single space, I designed a map for my application. I experimented with colors and finalized my map with 15 challenges. Because I incorporated 15 challenges, five per category, I decided to showcase my final deliverable as a time lapse, highlighting the first, seventh, and 15th day of the quest. This decision allowed me to create a more so finalized application. And I will now lead you through a walkthrough of a first time user on day one. All right, to start off, once opened, the application will display a few welcome messages before logging in or creating an account. Each message reads as follows. Embark on a predestined quest for self-expression let your shield down by personalizing your avatar and unlock new challenges by completing or unlock new levels um, by completing daily challenges. The user can then create an account with their information. I chose John Doe. John will then select their shield design and color before finalizing their profile. And as an ode to the medieval world, the user can select a title if they do so choose. The titles are gender inclusive and John decides they want to be a sir. I learned sir is usually given to those who identify as male, while dame is given to those who identify as female. However, if you are an avid Game of Thrones watcher, you may recognize Sir. In the TV show, Brienne of Tarth is referred to as Sir Brienne of Tarth as a gender neutral title. The user can then fill in the rest of their information and then they are off on their quest. The user is meant to follow their avatar across the map and select the highlighted X. Once they do, they start their first challenge. Now, John isn't the biggest social butterfly, so they're going to select the social challenge, introduce yourself to someone new, once selected, they then have 24 hours to complete the challenge and simply press the complete button. John can check the time remaining by selecting the 24 hour button and read through the social challenge statement. John knows they must test their social skills to develop self-confidence. Now, this was actually quite simple for John. So they selected the complete button and received a congratulatory message regarding their success. John sees the next X is highlighted on the map. However, when they go to click it, they cannot proceed because they can only complete one challenge per day. John can, however, take a peek at his challenges by selecting them in the menu. Since they just completed their first social challenge, John clicks on social to see his progress. Once John's content, they can then select the profile feature and log off for the day. 
In a nutshell, that's the main route and process for a first time or even a returning user. The path is stress-free and easy to follow, and that's exactly what you need as an ever-changing college student. So thank you all so much, and I hope you enjoyed this little self-expression journey just as much as I did. Great work, Kaylee. Good to see how well it all came together. Nice presentation also. Thank you. Okay, so Haley, uh, you're up next. Uh, as you're getting set up again, uh, anybody who's watching live, please feel free to throw comments and questions into the chat and we'll get them into the conversation, uh, which the QA session will begin after Haley has finished her presentation. All right, Haley, it's all yours. Oh, you're muted still. Sorry, my mouse disappeared there for a second. Um, my name is Haley Springman, and I am the creator of Vinyl Log and Licorice Pizza, and that will all make a lot more sense as I get into this. The Vinyl Log is basically a vinyl organization application, and Licorice Pizza is the accompanying uh, vinyl album that I branded to go with it. So to really understand um, this whole project, you're gonna need to learn a little bit more about me. So I am a huge vinyl enthusiast. I have been collecting records for years now, and it's something that I'm just really passionate about. I love music um, and I collect records with my mom. And as you can tell from this <laughs> Google Sheets that we have, this is the best way that we have to organize our vinyl albums. And we have quite a few of them. Between the two of us, we have over 300. And we really struggled to find a collaborative kind of system where we could easily access it when we're in record stores, um, but we can also edit them and view each other's lists at the same time. And it's this is basically our best option right now. So I thought it would be really interesting to create a, an application that will organize your vinyls for you and an easy way to access them in places where you don't have the best Wi-Fi, um, especially because in a lot of places where you buy records, you know, antique stores or record stores aren't always the best with Wi-Fi because it's very analog in there. Um, you don't always have the best Wi-Fi connection. So we would have to sit through and scroll on our phones until it takes screenshots of our albums. So having an application that doesn't have to connect to Wi-Fi would be really helpful as well. And so that's when I started on my research. Um, when I first started about this app, thinking about this application, I considered having um, like a marketplace sort of aspect to it where you can buy and sell records or see places to go buy records um, in your community. And so I spoke to uh, Blake Delaney, who was who is the owner and operator of the Vinyl Cafe in Ames, Iowa. Um, and his personal collection has over 2000 vinyl records. And so he and I had a discussion about um, the benefits that vinyl vendors would have if they were to be featured on an app like this. And that's when he introduced to me Discogs and PopPsych, which are two sites slash applications um, that are used for vinyl organization. Now the first one is Discogs, and you can see a brief run through of it on the right here, but it's not super user friendly. It's more about the knowing the value of your vinyls um, for the intense collector who wants to know like the value of their entire collection. Um, and it's very similar to Wikipedia. You can't just plug in an album that you bought that day, you have to search for it. And if it isn't already in the database, you have to enter it yourself. And that's a lot of confusing information. It's a lot of extra steps to get to personalized information as well. And then Pop Psych is um, all about buying and selling rare vinyls or vinyl related products. Um, you can't really have a library of your own vinyls or even really like a wish list. It's more just finding interesting items and buying and selling them. And so what I gained from this was that there isn't really anything for the enthusiast like me. So that's when I started switching gears. I took away that marketplace aspect of things um, and I focused on the real target audience that I wanted to have. 
And so this is me and my mom like four years ago, (laughs) but she and I are like, in my mind, the epitome of the enthusiast. We do this for fun and we do it because we love music and we aren't the kinds of people who need to know how much our collections are worth. Um, If we get a record for two bucks, we're like, this is cool. So I took a step back. I wanted to focus on the enthusiast the people who just love the music and just want to have all of their records in one place so they can easily access them when they're out vinyl hunting. I wanted to keep this simple. So this, the first steps were actually branding my application. And that's when I came up with the name vinyl log. Um, It's a play on both the word vinyl and logging. So like logging all of your vinyls in one place. Um, And I just started spitting things out. Basically, I went into Illustrator and I started laying things down and then I found this typeface and I was like, oh, I mean, it's almost there, but I've got to tweak it. And I started tweaking like the G's and then the spacing and then I added a record to it. Then I tweaked the L and then I tweaked it some more and then I tweaked it with some color. And then that's when I landed on this. This is the final logo and above were some variations of um, application icons that I had. And here's my brand guide. Um, So I just wanted it to be, oh my goodness. Hold on. Can you guys see my screen? Can you see it now? Yep. Yeah. We see your brand guide again. Sorry. I had like an Adobe pop-up come out of nowhere. So my apologies. Um, I wanted the logo to have kind of a retro feel but still feel a little contemporary because this is a contemporary way to deal with very retro things like albums. Um, In the top left you can see the icon that would show up on the home screen of your phone plus some um, black and white variations. I have my color palette and a lot of the gradients that I used as well. And then here is a run through of the app. I'll just be talking over it as it goes through. And I think that's the best way to explain what's going on. Um, So when you first open it up, you'll have this pop-up screen and then it'll take you directly to your album library. And here it's organized by artists, but you can switch it to albums. Um, It's all how you wanna organize it. And then to add an album, you would press that button and then you can either choose to take a photo of your cover or it'll automatically generate one as you enter your information. So this is just simulating what it would look like to enter that information. Um, And it'll pop up with the album that I branded myself. So that's a little sneak peek. Um, Then once you're done, it'll show up to the where it would show up in your album uh, library. And then if you wanted to click on one to see what that information will look like once it's already been plugged in, you can. And that's easily editable as well. Um, But for this one, we don't need to edit anything. So we're just gonna go back. And then it'll take you to your wish list, which is just a list of records that you wanna keep an eye out for when you're uh, vinyl hunting. And it can be um, organized the same way. Adding things is pretty darn similar. Um, A little less information because you don't have it in your possession yet. Um, but it'll generate the cover image as well and plop it right in there. And then we can move to your profile section. This is just where you can see who all's uh, libraries you can view and then add friends as well. And that's what adding a friend would look like. Then you can click on someone's profile and view their library and view their wish lists separately. And because you can view theirs, they can also view yours, but you can have options to remove people or add people um however you would like and then the next thing was branding the album um the album i named licorice pizza after um a record store that's based in southern california but the owner is from minneapolis which is where i am from um it's kind of a play on like what an album record looks like or vinyl record looks like um you know, it's flat and circular like a pizza, but it ha- it's black and it has grooves like black licorice. Um, so I thought that was really interesting and that could be a very interesting visual. And then I took a lot of inspiration from the Sugar Hill Gang Rapper's Delight album with their really interesting swirling typography. So this is the record that I branded. I utilized um, the use of 
the licorice texture in the background quite a bit. And I'm sure now that you see it, you can kind of see the resemblance to a vinyl record. Um, all this typography was done by hand and then just like placed over the texture um, and added highlights. And then the sleeve is kind of like um, just a flattened version of that. And then I chose to make it a red vinyl because if you're a vinyl enthusiast like me and you open up a, re a record and it's something other than black, it is so exciting. It's so fun. Um, and then this is my favorite thing, what it would look like in a record store. Um, you know, hopefully someday this is a reality for me, but for right now, this, I'm good with this. So thank you so much for listening to me talk about vinyl records for 10 minutes. And <laughs> I just had a great time making this project. So thank you. All right, great work, Kaylee. Thanks so much. Okay, Kaylee uh, and Julia, if you would wanna turn your cameras back on also. Um, we got a couple of questions in the chat um, and also just a few things that I'm curious about. So um, for anybody who's tuning in live, please feel free to keep the questions in the comments coming in the chat. Uh, it helps facilitate and, and get at what some of the students, you know, some of the things the students were working for. But Julia, I want to start with you. Um, as you were sharing the beginning of your project, uh, I know you started by collecting up this this information, and some of the statistics that you shared were were quite staggering and and, and showed why, uh, or at least demonstrated why you made some of the decisions that you did. What was some of that early information? Uh, what what of that early information was striking to you, or or what did you find to be the most inspirational early on? Um. Well, during that research, I found so many statistics on just how many, I think the most inspiring was the one I shared for sure out of how, like just seeing how many uh, just dogs and cats there are in the US and then just knowing that one third of those are gonna go missing and then 80% won't be found. That was crazy and then also when I did my previous research presentation, I shared more about my research, but I talked about how uh, like the disconnect between microchips and um, like um, the actual registration sites. And I think just like how many animals aren't microchipped actually concerns me as well. So it's just like a buildup of all of that information that I, um, read about that actually inspired this too. Yeah, nice. Okay, and then Kaylee, uh, this question comes from the comments. Um, how do you think your app could pair with universities as a tool to help students adapt to, cam uh, to campus? And that's from Raya. Oh yeah, okay. Hi, Raya. Okay, so um, for me, I was thinking about the whole university aspect, especially with the college students. And then in the profile, you can put um, which university you attend, which I put Iowa State University. Um, but I think it could be interesting if multiple students got together and um, just kind of work together um, to express themselves in a way. Um, I could probably incorporate a, an additional feature um, with um, other students to get um, connected with other university students um, outside of Iowa State University. Um, but yeah, I think it's an awesome um, suggestion to think about. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it seems like it could be a pretty seamless relationship. I mean, that's sort of where your inspiration started was, you know, this idea of expression and confidence within within these different situations. And gosh, college is such a big turning point for so many of those things, as you acknowledged in your presentation. Yeah, great, great idea. Great answer. Cool. So uh, Haley, there's a comment here from uh, Professor Sherry Err. She says, love the uh, wordsmithing for the intriguing logo type. So the combination of the of the words there. Um, and, and she just watched a movie that showed an extensive vinyl collection, which is reminiscent of this like searching in Iowa City record stores. What about that process of like volume do you think increases the value of this app? Meaning like you said it a little bit, I think, when you're talking about your spreadsheet, but when you have a few, that's one thing. But then once you get up towards like Blake status, 
there's a whole other issue. So, so what were some of the things you were thinking about uh, in terms of like the interface and the decisions that you were making related to this idea of the collection that you're trying to manage? Well, like I, I mentioned before, between my mom and I, we have like over 300 records. And it's really hard to keep track when you have multiple of the same kind of artist as well. And so I wanted to figure out a way where you could organize it by album name or artist name, just so you can like see all of your Elton Johns in one place or all of your Rod Stewart's because those are the two that I have the most of. <laughs> um, it is about volume a lot. This might not be for somebody who has like 10 ish records because it's not as hard to, you know, remember, I guess. Um, but once you start collecting, you know, it adds up quick and like Christmas presents, birthday presents, that's how I've gotten a lot of mine. Um, when, and if you're like me, I go into a record store and I almost black out because I just get so excited that I sometimes forget what I already have or I forget what I'm looking for. And so that's why I really wanted to include like a wish list as well. Um, because there isn't an app out there where you can both organize your entire library and create a wish list. And I just thought that would be valuable to have in one place so that when you are somewhere looking for records, um, you'll have both of those libraries, I guess. Yeah. And that's something that I think your presentation did a nice job of Haley is, is talking about how there's like a, there's a market gap here where there's individuals who collect because of the financial value of the object, but you're in a different category. You're collecting the object because of what it does or, or because you listen to it. And I think the interface reflects that even the idea that you can filter or show like, I want to see all my red vinyls. I want to see my blue vinyls. I want to see the clear ones or the marble ones that to me, that just seems like a really intriguing way to be able to, to filter and engage with that database. Maybe even knowing that like, seeing the artwork in your app is equally as engaging and, and reminiscent as digging them out and, and looking at them in person. Definitely. I'm glad yeah, that you were, that feeling from that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. What were some of the challenges that you, um, that you encountered Haley when you were thinking about getting the artwork to, to display or, or how you would represent the different colored vinyls, things like that? Well, it was difficult to figure out certain sizing um, for the album covers in your library, because I think, um, at least for me, I recognize a lot of my records from its album cover. And so I wanted that to be recognizable as you're just scrolling through. So you can just quick look at that instead of having to read each title. Um, but then when I was initially making the uh, application, <clears throat> when you were going to enter all the information when you were adding a new album, I was going to make the album cover a lot smaller for some reason. And then I was like, no, we should make this as big as possible so you can really enjoy the album art that these artists put so much work into, especially back in the day, like those things were hand done. Um, and so that was definitely like a challenge that I ran into and then making sure that the flow really made sense and that there was enough discretion between which one was the library and which one was the wish list, and then having those be shareable and accessible um, on both ends. Um, but it was, I had like the main points down, like I, especially because I wanted to keep it more simple and it wasn't as much of a like value um, as it like application as it was like an enthusiast application that helped, but it, basically the whole thing was a challenge, but it was like a very fun challenge. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that sounds great. So Julia, this question is for you. Um, and it's from the chat from Raya. How could pet shelters benefit from your app? Um, uh, slash, how did you organize the app to include pet shelters since you went, since you mentioned uh, missing pets? Right, right. Um, I think they could benefit from it because I think there is a statistic that I put in my last presentation about how many of these shelter animals are actually just um, lost pets. Um, so I think they could benefit from it just because it's another way to help these pets get back to their owners instead of relying on microchipping, which is like very unreliable. They could rely on this as well as it does have like health um, information like medications and allergies, which is very important when you're taking care of a dog that you have no idea about. Because some allergies, I know my dog has 
allergies to chicken and he cannot have chicken at all. So like some allergies are like fatal. Um, I think they could really benefit from it like that as well. Yeah, those are all really, really great points and really and difficult things to consider too when when designing the app. So Kaylee, uh, this question also comes from the chat. What was the significance of doing only one quest per day? And I know you wrestled like with the different options and how do you make it accomplishable but not overwhelming? And how do you find, like how does your app through the interface find the balance? So how did you, like what were some of the things that you sort of struggled with and how did you make the decisions about like the significance of, of doing one quest per day, things like that? Right, um, yeah, great question. I did struggle with deciding if I wanted to have a time component or not. Um, but at the very end, I thought, since I was only focusing on 15 challenges, if I'm an overachiever, so I would want to get everything done right out of the way. So I think having um, a time component would um, help balance out um, or just structure everything, um, give you a set pace that you can um, continue your quest with. Um, but yeah, I do see the benefits of also not having a time increment. Um, I think it was just another um, extra thing I wanted to include. Um, just as another thing of being like, oh, like it's just another challenge, um, having a time component as well as just completing the challenge. So, yeah. Great. And so then Haley, the, actually, so this is going to be a question for, for all three of you, uh, and, and we'll just go around, but I'll ask Haley first. What I find really intriguing about all of your projects is that they are apps that exist on mobile devices, but in a very real way, they connect to the world around. It's not just a, it's not just like a, it's not just an app that exists within the universe of an app. It very much requires the acknowledgement of things that are going around in space. So knowing that, what were, what was like one of the biggest challenges you faced in having to think about and design for this, you know, app centric experience, but that is very, very clearly happening and functioning in the real world? Um, well, mine was definitely an application that you can use not on Wi-Fi. Um, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but like when you're looking for vinyls and you're antiquing, maybe, you know, those places don't have great reception. <laughs> they don't have great access to um, internet and even just Googling things like looking up albums and everything. It's not very helpful. And so I wanted this application to just be like a library that it can store on your phone so you can access it. Um, and then like, if you wanted to view somebody else's, you know, it's all, it's in the app. You might not get updates if they're doing live things right away, but you'll be able to view those things. And that was just something that I really wanted to like hit home because this app isn't a lot of help if you can't access it um, wherever you're going. So that was my main thing. Um, other than that, it was just like making it easy to use, um, and easy to find the records that you already have in real time. Yeah, that, that's a great thought. And it's something that you see so frequently in other systems where people haven't considered what happens when you have a low signal or no internet connection, or you're in a rural environment, you know, in, at an estate sale or something is exactly like a situation I could imagine you having to address. Yeah, great, great thought. Great answer. How about you, Julia? What was one of the challenges with thinking about what else was going on kind of around your app when someone would be using it? I think that would be the emergency panic aspect of it if someone was to use it during an emergency situation like their dog is lost and they can't find it they're probably panicking and i was trying to figure out a way to make it as safe as or as fast as possible for them to just send it out quickly and easily but also making sure all the information is actually correct because I know in the real world with microchips, a lot of the information is not updated, so it's not even correct. So I wanted to kind of make a balance where they feel like they can update this information easily, but also just get it done with like two clicks and it's sent. So it's hard to find a balance between the right information and making it quick and fast. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Yeah. All very important things, especially in those sort of, like you said, the panic emergency moment, the number of things that you're trying to process as you're also, you know, sort of putting out these calls for help. Yeah. Great, great thought. How about you, Kaylee? Yeah. Um, so one of the challenges for me was just how can I encourage college students to express themselves? Um, when I was a freshman, I didn't express myself very openly. Um, I think this is the one year that I feel confident enough to openly express myself like through um, through words, through my style, and then like pushing myself outside my comfort zone. So I think it was more so how can I help like first year students and then just students in general feel confident to, enough to do that because I was also experiment or um, researching how um, people feel judged or they just like don't want to do that. Um, so how can I make this an enjoyable experience to actually make them want to express themselves? And then that's how I got with the whole quest idea and how college is all about finding yourself. So you might as well make it interactive um, and then grow as you're going through college. So yeah, that was a very big challenge I had to deal with at the very beginning. So yeah. Nice. And then to, yeah, to sort of gamify that process in a way where it becomes this like quest. And I, and I appreciate that you settled on to that after giving it a lot of thought and developing a lot of different possible directions that you eventually, maybe even along the lines of what you're suggesting, you just sort of went all in on this and said, this is the way that I'm going to try to solve this. And that was kind of the right step, uh, sort of like the right step down that path. So coming back to Haley, um, thinking about this idea of the other things that are going on, you mentioned that there's there you showed a portion of your app that involved having friends, having a network. And then when we sort of switched into the discussion, you mentioned that you get a lot of these things as gifts. Is that is is that a piece of this, like the idea of sharing or knowing what other people have as a way to like develop a wish list? And is there the potential for that functionality to exist in like a next iteration where you can directly, you know, sort of like interact with other people's lists in a way of like boosting your own or maybe giving, you know, finding gifts or I don't know what other kind of like social potential does it have in terms of like managing a network of people along with your network of or along with your collection of, of albums. Yes, that's actually a great thing to bring up. Um, I was considering the whole like friend thing when it came to like giving gifts um, because vinyl records are kind of like, you don't want to get somebody a duplicate um, if you know that, like if you don't know that they need one, you know, cause like I have a duplicate, a couple because they have scratches but like other people wouldn't know that. Um, it's just like very good information to know, especially like, if you like, if you aren't my mom and I don't really have a good grasp on what your library looks like, it's good to have like a list of albums that like you already have and maybe ones that you're keeping an eye out for. Um, but an extension of that, it could be interesting if there was a way to like check off people's wish, wish lists or something. Um, sort of like when you're, I can't remember the word for it, but when you're getting married and you like go to target and you scan all those things and people like buy uh, like them. a registry registry. Thank you. <laughs> it could be kind of like a registry thing. That could be cool. Um, I didn't want to go too deep into the like social media aspect of it. You know, the friends thing was more just like a, here's my li library. Now I can see yours type of thing. Um, I didn't want it to be like a huge, like, Ooh, like this post, or I have this many friends on my vinyl log app. Um, but it could be interesting to expand that to a to a way where you can actually tell people like, hey, I just got a new record, like check out my my library or something. That could be cool. Yeah, it seems like you did a good job of balancing that line of, of deciding like, no, this is mostly about the records. And it's a little bit about the fact that like I choose you're going to address. I know at different points in your process, you 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 had like lots of things that you were going to try to accomplish and i think in the end you did a really nice job of of getting it down to like the essentials what 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 were some of the um what were some of the ways that you prioritized the functionality that you were going to to build into this this petly app yeah this is a good question because it was actually like i think 2 weeks ago like really recent in the project where i literally had designs I had screens for like a whole portion of this app 
that I ended up taking out because I was like, I feel like I should focus more on just the features that are actually important in like emergency safety situations. So, or just like helpful situations. Whereas I'm gonna save more of like the community aspect of it and like friending people and having more of a community that way for like a separate app. I feel like it, that could be its own thing. Whereas for this, I don't want it to be all over the place. And yeah, I did struggle with that in the beginning. I feel like my mind was in 10 different places with where this was gonna end up. But in the end, I definitely broke it down to just the essentials for like important situations. Yeah, you did a nice job of really identifying through that process what the app was about and then ensuring that like all those decisions you made were against that because feature creep is this was mentioned in, a, in an earlier comment in the chat like feature creep is a real thing it, it, as you sort of have these ideas you have to evaluate what what comes in and, and what doesn't so kaylee the the next question is for you um and this is uh from professor sherry Err again um it says the stats for um uh, students needing to be perfect means that there's like a rise in anxiety for students as well. So is there a solution to get students to strive, but also embrace this search or the journey for not needing to be perfect, not needing to have perfect results? Yeah, that is a loaded question. Um, so yeah, so as a perfectionist myself, I deal with this um, very commonly. I um, experience anxiety all the time, just in general, um, with completing projects, uh, finding yourself in college, everything like that. Um, but yeah, I think it's important that um, somehow with these like statistics of people not wanting to um, express themselves based on anxiety or just based on perfectionism in general, they don't want to break the mold. Um, and not be seen as perfect. It's kind of scary if you're not seen as perfect and you're um, you're not in the mold, like I said. So I think just making sure that this app was very inviting and it was celebra celebrating you putting yourself out there, even if you are anxious. Um, part of the challenges I chose made me extremely anxious. Um, one of them was raising my hand and asking a question and I'm learning how to do that still. Um, it's getting more easy um, as I'm talking here now. It's nervous talking to all of you guys, but I think, um, yeah, the app does a great job of cel celebrating everything that um, they're putting everyone or the um, students through. So, yeah. Nice. And I also, I think it's that kind of awareness also that can help create an environment where generally speaking, students can hopefully feel like college is a place to grow and learn and, and take risks. And so actually that dovetails perfectly into kind of how I want to close this out. But before I do that, do you all have anything else that you want to say or anything else that you want to share before we sort of wrap things up? You guys did a great job. I loved your apps. <laughs> they were awesome. Thanks, you too. Need to do like a vert, like a high five. Like, oh wait, maybe it's maybe it's this way. There, somebody, I high five somebody. I think, I awesome. Know. So along this realm of like taking risks and going all in, I just want to say that it has been awesome working with the three of you, Julia, Haley, Kaylee. The way that your ideas came about were, you know, each of you were different in the way you approached it, but you each wrestled with different challenges at different times, and you you embraced it. You went all in. You struggled. You made stuff that you were willing to like walk away from. You tried different things. You 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 stuck to the goals that you had set out initially. And I think you came out with projects that you should be really, really proud of. So thank you for being in my section. Thank you for hanging out with me this semester. Really great work on the projects and great work presenting them today. You, you did a really nice job of summarizing what was a lot of work. You, you started out with statistics and research and showing like the, the market gaps and things like that. So I can't wait to see how your work evolves into the future. So thanks again for being here. Thank you for everybody who tuned in live. Uh, it was great. All the comments and the questions in the chat. Um, definitely go back and look at these comments that are here. So for everybody tuning in live, this is the last presentation panel for today. We start again tomorrow morning. Uh, it's at 10 a.m. Central Time. The link to it is in the comment for this video here. Um, but thanks again for everybody tuning in and to Julia, Haley, and Kaylee. Great work again. And I, I really uh, am excited for the stuff that you've done and I'm excited to see what you go off and do next. So thanks everybody for being here. Have a good night. <laughs>